Good morning, folks. Today we'll be looking at a big earthquake near Cuba, a train of typhoons in the Pacific, magnetic decision making, earth tilt event frequency, and of course we are starting with the last 24 hours on our star, where flaring is done exactly as expected. An M9 near X-class impulsive flare happened right after yesterday's morning show, and several smaller M-class events followed. CME activity was luckily low due to the impulsiveness of the flares, at least in the Earth-directed position, but we've got more to watch for and it is focused on that flaring. You can see the X-ray flux chart here, relatively active, and it is all because of the sunspot group we've been targeting as having the most magnetic complexity. You see the flare flashes here in 131 angstroms. It would not be unexpected to get more of those flares today, but first let's take a quick look to the solar wind. While plasma pressure is very low, a sustained phi angle turn allowed plasma to pour into Earth's system and caused continuing geomagnetic unrest, including a brief storm level event. Not much more expected from this one, although the northern coronal hole is expected to have its amplified stream arrive here at Earth in the middle of the week. Let's come back to the sunspots. There's been a bit of decay in the leading groups, leaving only the trailing active region, the most developed one you see here, as a significant flaring threat. It continues to have a complex magnetic field orientation with both polarity, split positioning, and significant interaction at the delta class areas front and back, where the positive and negative are close together. Folks, there was a big earthquake south of Cuba yesterday, 6.8. Luckily, it was far enough offshore that damage and injury reports are minimized, it's the benefit of having larger seismicity occur out to sea. The land shaking is significantly reduced. Up next, we're going to the West Pacific, where it's now four storm systems chugging along. Each has an overall westward motion, but with a north or south bend expected. Vietnam, Philippines, Taiwan, and the islands around Guam are all on alert here. Now, let's get to the articles. We begin with this one, a detailed look at animal behavior, decision making, and one of the things that was impacting it was the change in the magnetic field. This hints at something we've discussed many times before, that everything normal becomes abnormal during a magnetic pole shift, and that goes far beyond the weather and radiation. It impacts biological brains. Lastly on the article front is an Easter egg for veteran observers familiar with the catastrophism science. They're looking at increases in atmospheric CO2, but due to Earth's tilt changing, examining bubbles in an ice core that ranges 70,000 years from 190 to 260,000 years ago, they found seven significant events. And if you do that math, it means there was an Earth tilt shift about once every 10,000 years or so during the period. Yeah. Folks, don't forget two major events at the ranch before the end of the year. Conference on November 30th, where I'll make you a global expert in the disaster cycle in one day. And then, UFO Day and the pre-solstice party on December 14th. Come see us, observerranch.com. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 5.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.